the loss of the last of the Blackland Prairie would be a loss of the connection that we have to our natural history in this region. And that's unacceptable. It's simply unacceptable. To understand a prairie remnant, it's important to get out and listen to the birds, feel the plants, and understand how they're communicating with one another. The system is dynamic. It's always changing. I learn new things every day. I continue to find new plants every year. I'm watching and learning from the animals continuously. There's always something that is at its peak, while at the same time there's something that's fading away and something new coming on. The early settlers and explorers, the naturalists, the scientists that traveled through these areas, they wrote about an endless sea of grasses punctuated by an occasional large tree. These prairies were vast and ripe for exploration. This is very likely what the landscape looks like, as it probably were 1,000, 3,000, 10,000 years ago. And so it is a step back in time. Plymer Meadow is an amazing Blackland prairie remnant. And when we say a prairie remnant, we mean it's a place that has never been plowed. Everything that we would expect to find in a native prairie is here. To have Clymer as this special place that shows us what we used to have so much more of is just really amazing. And on the other hand, you drive around and 99% of the rest of the prairie is gone. Prairie species rely on their seed falling in a place where it could potentially grow. Today, when these seeds fall a few feet or a few hundred yards, they may end up in a road. They may end up in a parking lot. The prairies that we have left are essentially little islands of native habitat. In other words, the connectivity has been broken and lost. It is impossible that we will rebuild that, but we can do many different things to improve what we have. We think of restoration as reigniting the natural processes of the native ecosystems. We are able to rebuild more prairie or increase the quality of the habitats that are surrounding our remnant spaces. If we want more prairie, we have to go out there and actively create it. And that means that we need to find landowners who are willing to work with us and restore prairies on their properties. I'm Eric Poole. I own a 53-acre piece of property with my wife and my daughter, Emily. It's encumbered by a, a conservation easement, which means I can only do certain things with it. Luckily, those things correspond exactly with what I want to do with the property, which is bring it back to its native state, enjoy a place to come out on the weekends, share it with my family and friends, get out of Dallas and enjoy the sounds and smells and things that you just don't get anywhere else. Biodiversity loss is everywhere, so you read articles about insects declining and birds declining, and right here, you know, 99% of this environment's gone. Even today, you're losing one to 5% a year of what's already 99% gone. And so, you know, the second that I learned about this place and that I could actually do something about it, ownership of the land came with ownership of that problem at the same time. That first time that monarch butterfly comes in and lands on your property, you're like, we, you know, got these plants here to let these butterflies come in. That's pretty amazing. One of the things that we need to think about going into the future is what we want our Texas to look like. And we think prairies should be a really big part of a future Texas. They store carbon, they help improve water quality, and they also provide habitat. We want to make sure that they're part of the future of Texas. This is a dynamic landscape. Watching those small changes or the great changes across the landscape really touches inside a person. It's actually grabbing something inside each of us as a space that belongs here in North Texas.